this video is to show you how to set up a, a laboratory notebook properly for a chemistry class, uh, at least for one at uh, Maine West High School. This ends up being the composition notebook. It's quad ruled. It doesn't necessarily have to have this wonderful green stripe in the cover, but it does have to be a composition notebook in which the pages are sewn in and the pages themselves are graph paper. So if you'll notice, the graph paper itself actually has grids all the way across. Uh, preferably if it's a light blue, it's going to be a little bit easier. There are some uh, lab notebooks out there that end up having dark purple lines. It might be a little bit more difficult. Now the reason I mentioned that it's required that the pages are sewn in, if we actually flip to the very center of the page, uh, center of the notebook, I'm going to actually zoom in and you can see this hopefully. Um, and if we look, you can see the very center has this sewn line right going down the center in here. That means this piece of paper, and I'll zoom back out, this piece of paper, and this piece of paper is actually one long sheet of paper and just has a, uh, the sew line right down the middle of it. Which means if I tear out this side, this other page is going to fall out as well. So you cannot, you cannot tear any of the, the pages out of this notebook. So now that we have that set up, if you go ahead and, and, or at least you know that the pages are not going to be torn out, if you flip to the front of the actual page itself on the cover over here, it would make sense to put down your name. It would also make sense to put down the name of your teacher and the class period that you have them. Your full name on the cover should be put in ink, because if it's not in ink, um, later on if it gets lost and it's in pencil, it might just rub off too easily. So now we're going to go ahead and set up the lab notebook itself so that way it has all the proper components before we even start doing an experiment. Now, in this lab notebook, if you wanted to go ahead and choose to write on the right-hand side or the left-hand side of the page, it doesn't matter. But you only get to write on one side of the piece of paper. If you write on both sides of the piece of paper, the ink is going to bleed through and make it impossible to read anything on either side of the piece of paper. So, with this entire year, you get to pick one side of the sheet to write on only for the entire school year. Now, if you're left-handed, you can start on the left hand side and actually start writing on this page. If you're right handed it'll probably make a whole lot more sense to start on that page instead. So I have already started to page number this book. Let's go ahead and take a look at how I've page numbered it. Since I'm right handed I use the upper right hand corner. If you're left handed of course you'd be using the other side of the paper if you wanted to. Um, and let's take a look what I have done. In the upper right corner I ended up writing down I. For the second page, I did II. Third page, III. Fourth page, IV. Fifth page, V. Sixth page, VI. Seventh page is the number one. Now, from there on out, for the rest of the book, it's going to be two, three, four, five, all the way to the end of the book, which means you do need to page number the entire book. Now that you've had a chance to page number the entire book, uh, we are now going to set up the table of contents. Regardless of whether or not you're left-handed or right-handed, start from the right-hand side of the page and count in three squares. Now, if you want to consider this little sliver three squares, that's up to you. does not matter to me at all. So if I count in, and let's say here is my tick mark. There's my tick mark for three. Then I'm going to count in six squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. And put another tick mark. Then I'm going to count another six squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put another tick mark. Then I'm going to count three squares. Put a tick mark. And that's it. So now I have my tick marks. With those tick marks, I'm now going to take my ruler and draw a line straight down at the page from those tick marks. So from this one. Next one. The last two. All 
Alright, so now you should have four lines going down the page. So we've got the pages numbered, or at least started to be numbered, and we have the beginning lines of our first page set up. I'm going to draw a line horizontally across the top, giving me about three, maybe four squares at the top of the page so I can still write something up on top. At the top, I'm going to write down title and purpose. Page number, prelab, and completion. So now, once again to review. Very top, ends up saying title and purpose. Page number, prelab, and completion. Now that we have the top of the table set up, we're going to set up the rest of the page. What you're going to do is count down from the top line by the title and purpose by six squares. Two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to put a tick mark, and then from there. I'm going to draw a horizontal line all the way across my lab notebook. I'm going to do that again. And then that's going to have a line going all the way across the page. Then you're going to do that for the entire page. Every six squares, draw a horizontal line. So here's the table of contents, the very first page on I that now has been set up. You'll notice that I have each one of these rows has six squares from top to bottom. I've got going across here, title and purpose, the page number, pre-lab, and completion. That gave me six squares going across the top for completion, six squares for pre-lab, three squares for page number, and a bunch for title and purpose. Now with this, I have one page of table of contents done. There are six Roman numerals, pages of Roman numerals, which means that there's going to be six pages that look exactly like this page right here, and you get to redo that same type of data table on those six pages. Also, to have the pre-lab ready to go, every single page in the lab notebook should be page numbered. The first six will be Roman numerals one through six, so I, 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 V, and v, uh, v and VI, and the last pages will be numbered in order, going from 1 uh, all the way up to most likely 94. Most of these laboratory notebooks came with 100 sheets in them, so that gives us 94 sheets beyond the table of contents.